Mm. That just even when you're alone, that's a moment with you that you could either be present with and appreciate, or you could be lost in a grocery list or nagging yourself over what you're not good enough with or what you didn't do. But it's just, that's how precious all of our life is. Mm. is we've got such vast, like not only can we seek out different experiences, but like Sam Harris points out, we can also reprogram how we experience everything. So we've got different reality filters we can set. Plus we've got places to go, people to see, art to consume or create. And there's just a plethora of it out there. Mm. And every single moment that you choose to do anything, every actuality destroys every other potential. And so whoever I'm talking to tomorrow at 1013, it eliminates everyone else I could have. Whatever you mm. choose to do now destroys everything else mm. that you could have been doing. So the fact that I'm sitting here now is why I'm not taking a shower, is why I'm not outside watching the stars, is why I'm not eating. You're always sacrificing everything for something. And Ooh. so you can right. get that much respect that I'm with someone right now and I'm sacrificing the entire world for them. I'll be present with them. And I could, or I could be eating anything. And by eating this apple, I'm not eating anything else. Hmm. Well, speaking of sacrificing everything for something, I think I'm going to go hang out with my husband, guys. <laughs> <You don't laughs> he, put, he put the kids to bed for me, so what, that's wonderful. I, um, I think that's a good sacrifice. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay, great. So we have the song by the band The Queers, where the chorus is just, fuck the world, I'm hanging out with you tonight. No, oh, yeah, fuck the world. Go hang out with John. Uh, I'm a little bit. I, I would. Ha I'm a little bit less ex expletive. But... <laughs> well, but you I, know I what just, I mean. I want to give yeah, two Andrew suggestions. Will say, pardon me, world. I'm going to excuse you. <laughs> yes, pardon me. Sorry, what were you saying, Kevin? I, I want to give before we head out. I want to give. Oh, two and me and Kevin, we can stay on a little longer if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, I want to give a suggestion to you, Andrea, uh, as far as uh, video games to play. Okay. Um, there's there's one that uh, it gives it gives a an interesting person to kind of bounce your thoughts off of, as far as like thinking thinking of higher things, mm -hmm. and that is Outer Worlds. It's it's not a very good game. It's kind of linear you you get you get the you get this strange uh illusion of choice but it's still it's still a fantastic uh narrative to go through on a character basis there's a there's an individual that that you'll that you'll come across called Vicar Max and okay. he and go through his story talk to him about everything that guy give gave me so much best friend because okay. it he he's a scientism priest oh, and he's I trying to that for all my he, encounters on twitter with the like he he's he's like the ultimate like if you took freemasonry to its ultimate religious ends it's just like trying to find the architect to the beginning of everything who figured out the perfect equation. It's just like, that's what he's trying to figure out. And I, I, I had, there was so many questions that were opened up by it, by addressing that guy's points that I had such great conversations with my, with my best friend. So that one, it's the outer worlds and something just kind of fun is the Mass Effect series. Two and three kind of start falling off the end because that's when everything went like Gamergate-ish. But okay. the first one is solid. I think I've heard of Mass Effect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I wrote down, I'll remember Mass Effect, but I wrote down Outer World. Worlds yeah. or World? I, I think it's out, Outer Worlds. Yeah. Okay. And, and you, and you want to you wanna pay close attention to Vicar Max. Just take him around everywhere. He's, he's, okay. he's a great companion. Okay. Good to know. Okay. Well, thank you for chatting, gentlemen. And... Yes, I will leave you to each other. And tell Josh I love him. <laughs> <laughs>
I, I will. He, I, I would like him to meet you someday. Yeah, yeah. That could sure. happen sometime. Oh, also, bye, Shane. <laughs> okay, hello, Shane, Shane. Do you want to tag in? Are we saying goodnight to Kevin, or do you want to tag? Okay, Shane? I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna. I'll let Let's you guys figure. Go it. ahead. Okay, uh, bye. Bye, Andrea. Bye. bye. Um. Okay. So, is are we wrapping this up now, or did you have something else you wanted to continue or tag Shane in? Well, Shane, if, if, want if Shane wants to, if Shane wants to pop in, I've got nothing against that. He he was bringing. He said Elder Scrolls Four, and I would agree. I would agree with that. That's a good. That would. That's a, it. It brings in like this dynamic of living gods thing, and it's like really weird. Um, there's there. What I wanted to suggest to you was actually a show uh, that started out as a manga, a Japanese. Uh, comic book uh called pumpkin scissors never heard of it i'll check that out pumpkin it's scissors pumpkin scissors and what reminded me is that he's got this little lantern that he turns on every time he kind of goes nuts he uh he was part of this it's like if you took all of the weird stuff that happened in world war ii like off the off to the side all the super soldier experiments and then put it into world war one and made it made it its own world that okay. That's the that's that's the storyline, and it's this giant guy who was part of this anti-tank experiment, and they made soldiers, men, as an anti-tank experiment. It's just like guys against tanks. It's like okay, what? <laughs> so, so he's got this little lantern, and you you see that thing, and it's this blue light off in the distance, and your your cigarette reminded me of that. And I'm like, I gotta tell him about pumpkin scissors, the will o' the wisp thing. And this guy that goes psychotic, you might get something out of it. It's a, it's a neat, it's a neat. That sounds uh, interesting. How you doing, nice Shane? Thing. Good, good, good. I did a, uh, got to do a little bit of yard work while you guys were talking, and. Uh, I'm gonna grab a coffee, so I'll be able to hear you, but I'll be okay. off. Camera. Okay. Yeah, it's. I'm finding it's uh, like being, it's a, a tiny bit difficult being watching a conversation and wanting like i thought of something <laughs> well, yeah yeah and, but, and uh, you're and you're chatting in the whole time and it's like oh yeah that's great i i think that's that's fantastic because you it's it's like having having a um having a a comment section that you can interact with but without mm -hmm. it being like overwhelming like you have on youtube mm. Cause mm. like they're like they're just piling in. If you got like one or two people putting in a comment, I think that's fantastic because they can help you remember things. Right. Like you were, you helped me remember Greg's name, mm. mm -hmm. and 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 things like that. So it's like that's that's fantastic. It's, okay. it's like it's like the fr it's like the third person in the podcast, like with Joe yes. Rogan, Jamie, yeah, Jamie, yeah, 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 yeah. So you were the Jamie of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was attempting, and then and then when uh the next time when you like answered your own question like you start typing it up i'm like okay so i'm just gonna step back and let them jamie themselves and uh yeah if they need something they'll ask yeah 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 I, yeah because i couldn't i couldn't remember fantastus because it's such a weird word Fantastes, yeah like because yeah. the suffix didn't make sense with the rest of the word so it's just like what mm. fantastis <laughs> what is that but oh, yeah Dude. There he is. Cool. I just found a crushed soda can in my pocket. Okay. Okay. So what did you have to add to everything that you didn't uh, get to say? Oh, gosh. Um, I thought one thing that really stuck out is when you were – the idea of responsibility, like when – just when you mentioned Kevin uh, Peterson's uh, mystical experience and what that – The, the missed question, opportunity uh, of it? Yeah, the, the... I've heard someone, I won't say who, because I'm not sure if they want to be quoted, but I've heard audience member before refer to that and ask me, what do I think of Peterson rejecting the Holy Spirit? Mm. Yeah, 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 that's... Yeah. So you can frame it that way. Being a Pentecostal, like, that's exactly what I look for, like, all the time. And it's just like, dude, that happened to you and you said no? <laughs> <laughs> 
It's like I, I, I understand it though. It's sad. But it means in a way you lose your humanity. Now there's a different type of humanity after that, but you're not you can't relate to other people in the way you could before. And especially at first you can't relate to other people. And you can learn a new way to relate to other people. But mm -hmm. it's something you sacrifice and then you have to reform your ability yeah. to relate to others to connect to that state. You it's have very to, it's, it's 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 literally first. biblical. You die to yourself. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and then then you're oh, reformed. Yeah, it's total death of self. Um mm -hmm. have you ever seen the movie Super, Kevin? Yes. We did it as a watch party once, the James Gunn movie with Rain Wilson. Uh I think so. I think I've seen that one. Where the top of his these um, anime style tentacles come in from the wall and cut off the top of his head, and then the finger of God comes down and touches his brain. No. Oh, you've got to think... watch Super by James Gunn. I think it's like 2010 or something. It's a comedy, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a comedy superhero movie. Hmm. but also makes some profound fucking points. And the end of that movie, to me, is like one of the most important lessons you learn from deep mysticism is so, the wrap-up of that movie. Shane, what, what else were you saying about responsibility? Um, just, I, just that uh, it's like when... When you accept the responsibility, it's like you have to, for me, it seems like the responsibility is you're constantly thinking about God and how he's looking at you. Almost, it's like the responsibility to be God's light, I guess, and have that be being like your constant thing and not, it's like, it's like, uh, a that it's a task it's like it it puts an it's a, a task that like you have to it's more like a dance or a game than a task mm. Mm. more like learning how to dance with god knowing which steps you're supposed to be making right like in flow with what your partner yeah wants. but it's 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 a it's may seem like it's do it's it's duty with play at the same time it it, it has to be it, it has to be un unrecognizable which you're doing mm. like are are is he playing or is he working it's like yes <laughs> the it's it's that new meme that's come out with like the chad head off to the side it just says yes underneath it it's just like it like are are you being ridiculous or or are you praising god it's, yes I am, I am, I am David dancing before the Lord. It's just like he, he was in his underwear and his wife cursed him for it. And so she, because like, be, because he was, because she had said that uh, God cursed her to be barren. It's like, he, he is praising me and you're mocking him. Enough of you. <laughs> this is like, but, like, I, I'm not putting up with that. Like, he's doing the right thing, and you're just wagging your finger at him because he looks a little silly. <laughs> One thing I was going to um, mention just when, Merck, you were talking about how uh, people see things, uh, people are in alternate universes, mm -hmm. and you were like, I'm in all three of your universes. And I was like, oh, but you're in mine. Does he know? Is, is, am I gone in his universe right now? Also... No, I was aware of you, and I was also aware later, which perhaps already exists, and we're just not in that groove of the record. We're now existing in other universes that we won't perceive firsthand. There's people already watching this later that we now exist in all mm. of their universes. And each one of them sees a different chain. So you're multiplying right now. There's reflections <laughs> of you manifesting that black that reflected out into all these other universes that observed it. And people with different <laughs> hearing. Some people won't have heard a certain register of that. Others will. Some will have found you sexually attractive. Others will have found you a pleasant face. Somebody else maybe has some resentment and jealousy issues and thinks you look like a dick because he doesn't <laughs> want to admit that he looks up to you. It's like there's all these different versions of you out there now. 
Right. Sorry, I was laughing because of what you said. Like, we're not in that groove of the record. I was just like, oh my gosh, that's a fantastic analogy. Mm-hmm. We're not in that groove of the record because it's it's spiraling. It 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 brought back my my uh, analysis of time with with Voth is the straight spring of you know it always comes around, but it's never the same spot. You know, it, you're saying that history, you quoted someone I hadn't heard it before. History doesn't repeat, it rhymes. Yeah, yeah. One of you quoted that, and that yeah, was my first that, time. It's Mark Twain, I think. I think, yeah, it, it rhymes. And the moment he said the moment he said that, I was I was trying to reconcile Eastern and Western versions of time and thought. And the moment I heard it rhymes, I said, yes, that works. <laughs> Or that works for now until I can understand it from even another perspective. Yeah. Also, sometimes learning a new perspective where suddenly words mean different things doesn't negate the original perspective. What I do is I don't look for the right perspective. I'm gathering as many as I can learn how to use so that then I can choose which one applies to when. So for me, it's not about tuning into the right dimension. It's about exploring all the dimensions available and then, you know, going where (laughs) the places I found nicest or sometimes most useful. Because now sometimes I tune into hell for the purpose of getting someone out. Mm. So I will, in fact, tune into that because I've got a reason to go into it. But other than that, I don't intentionally tune into that. Now, sometimes I need to do some shadow work or learn. And so reality will start pushing me there. Um... But I've learned more skills where I can resist that if I want, and I can delay negative emotions, or I can choose to experience them, process them now, and get them done. Now, is there anything else you wanted to chip in on, Shane? Like other things that that popped up in the conversation? Um, Oh, I think you laughed at my at my at my edition of the 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 KFC down the road. That was yes, yes, yes. Yeah. The KFC down the road, and uh, there was one more thing where I laughed, and then I was going to type laugh out loud, didn't, and then I was like, okay, I just, I just uh, it was. You were talking about. Ah, oh, I'm gonna. I might have to watch it unless I unless I remember. You were talking to uh, Angela about Andrea. Andrea. Angela, why did I? Um, it's okay. She's not here. <laughs> why did I get that name wrong? I know an Angelica who sort of has kind of a similar. Type, but, yeah. So uh, I was talking to her about uh, the comics or uh, the stories. The comics. It was the comics. Comics. Okay. Something, it was really distinct. I, for, I forgot exactly, I think it, you might have been talking about the dads or the fathers uh, in comics. I thought that was like, int- oh, one thing I thought uh, was good or, or insightful was that the, the orphans, how they, they are heroes. And I think yeah. that might have to do with something with being in conflict early in life and conflict being a big part of life, especially if you're a hero, Mm -hmm. like, and already having uh, some conflict, like- The journeys of orphans. fragile thing that like Hype points out for the anti-fragility of us means that to forge a hero, you hammer on it. It's like making a sword. You plunge it into the fire, hammer on it, plunge it in, hammer it. And yeah. as long as it's not too much that it doesn't break the individual, um, it strengthens them. And it's so good. I wonder what your thoughts, Shane, are on that idea of with great power comes great responsibility. Hypothetically, if someone was a superhero or had actual magical powers, how much are they really supposed to be stopping all the crimes? Because like how much, at what line are you the hero? And then the tyrant over everyone and how much do would you actually want to interfere because you'd start to look at other adults like children they need to make their own mistakes to a certain degree so 
how much should a superhero step in or how much should the superhero allow us free will to be idiots and stab each right. other? Right. Uh, first thing I thought, like, I just put myself in the what if I had superpowers and I'd probably be in the, in the uh, camp of having fun with it and then all of a sudden there being an actual problem that society, like, needs help with. It'd probably be one society asked for help. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, if you suddenly had Superman's powers, it won't be like someday there will be a problem. Right away, people are going to come to you saying, mm. get the Jews out of Israel, and someone else will be like, you've got to take down this terrorist organization. Someone else will feel it's your responsibility to liberate China. Someone else will think you should interfere with North Korea. And it would be like God, like, whose prayers do you listen to? Because both sides would come to you saying, destroy them. And let us have this land. Well, it's it's that's the watchman. It's like and you will look up and say save us, and I will say no. <laughs> it's just like okay, well, what do we do with that? And it's the same issue with the with the Incredibles. Is that guy that he saves at the beginning of the story? It's like you didn't save my life; you ruined my death. The guy was trying to jump off the building, and he saved him and like broke his neck, and so now he's like in this cast thing. It's like, yeah. How do you how do you get through that? How do you how do you save people properly? <laughs> so, what what are your thoughts on that, Shane? Um, I don't know. One thing I wanted to show you, though, Mark, I, it just popped in my head. The uh, you were mentioning the um, the super the movie super Hmm. and you were mentioning how um the god coming coming down and like touching his eye it's or his brain brain. it's very similar to peterson the roof disappears you know what i mean it just peels back yes yes okay one picture i want my my cousin did this i don't know if you saw it i put it on uh sally's thing but my my cousin drew this when he was hanging out at my house and uh I was like, what the hell are you doing, kid? So he made this thing. And it reminded me of Super uh, when, when he did it. And he just, he did that and he said, I don't know where it came from. And wow. I, I suggested wow. uh, like little additions, but this is mainly him. A lot of stuff like this. I, lo- I love analyzing it, but at the same time, I don't want to get like stuck into um, the curtains are blue. Um, do, do you know what I'm talking about there, Shane? I, I don't know what that is. Okay, that so the I curtains know. are blue. I was taught this in school. I'm amazed at how many people have no idea what the curtains are blue is, but I think it's because the curtains are blue is something that kind of fixes a lot of the postmodern problems because a lot of people will try to overanalyze and the curtains of blue stops you from overanalyzing because the curtains are blue is a an example given to where a storyteller is describing a room and he mentions that the curtains are blue and then everybody who reads the story is giving all of these meanings to these blue curtains. It's like, oh, we must be depressed or sad, or it might be be uh, springtime or winter. It's like whatever blue means to you. And then they approach the author, and the author just says, no, the curtains are just blue. But it doesn't mean there's not a value in how each person saw it symbolically. Just that's not an objective fact they need to tell everyone else that tells you something about yourself. So when you look at it, it's like a Rorschach test. It's Mm -hmm. so when someone comes to you with, oh, this is what it means. They're telling you about themselves in those situations. And you can listen to them that way if they don't want to understand that. But that's like a deeper level of mindfulness where you can Mm -hmm. observe your reaction to everything in a fiction. And then when it means something, you ask yourself, is that because it means that to everyone? Like a stop sign means stop your car. That's not my subjective experience of a stop sign. But 
perhaps if a stop sign is scary to me, that's because I've been hit by a bus. And that one's not objective necessarily. And so sometimes the curtains are just blue. But that gives you the opportunity to go like, well, I guess I've got some depression to face because that sounds like sadness to me. Yeah, but at the same time, there, there's something about that, like if the if the author or painter or drawer or whoever, if the artist is around still, ask them the question of what they meant by something that 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 jumps out to you. Get context on it so you're not going off into weird tangents, and that gives you that gives you the that gives you both sets of this is what I see and this is what it what it's supposed to mean and then it can kind of get get you into alignment where you you have a narrower cone of possibilities instead of this giant shotgun of of interpreting something to the to something the author did not did not intend at all or would it directly oppose right okay you want one, some context one thing i thought of like with the, with that drawing i thought the awareness of higher of uh the higher uh, realms or awareness of like divinity or God or like that, that made sense to me. Like I thought, like I think, and then one other thing, when you mentioned earlier about putting things in your story and other people uh, mentioning things about it, mm -hmm. like I've like, that might be useful here like that idea of what if the blue curtains just felt right like put it in there for a reason and maybe maybe some of that some of those kernels that people find are meant to be in there beyond yeah. like if you ask the artist maybe um and they say i don't i i don't know why i put that in there or, uh, or another I mean, way you could, another way the artist could respond, like hypothetically, would be like, "Well, it means that now. Like once you've read it and seen it, I guess it means that now." Because well, well, meanings build as well. When we add different context and like stories mean more eventually than they used to mean. Yeah, yeah, and what 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 Charlie showed showed me was things that I hadn't written. The thing is, mm. the things that he showed me are in the book. Mm. So if somebody, if, if right. somebody told me like, if I, I don't think I, I don't think I named the ship that they're on for most of the, for, for some of the book. And if I gave that ship a name, I, th I think I haven't given it a name because I haven't figured out a name. But if I gave that ship a name and somebody told me what that name means, and I would say, no, not in, not, that's not what I meant by it, then it wouldn't mean that. But, but, when, when Charlie told me the things that happened in the past of the characters that existed, they exist in that book, that's, that's what exists. Now, why, why would I say that? Because if you, if you say the curtains are blue and somebody says, oh, uh, it's an analogy for depression, and the artist says, "Well, no. Well, then it's no. But if it, if the curtains are blue, because the main character has depression and chose those curtains because they're depressed, then then it makes sense. If it makes sense within the context of the story, mm -hmm. then it actually happened, and that's why like." He gave, he gave me the background to this character that I did not write the background to her. Okay. At all. And I had no idea where he came up with all this stuff, but the moment I applied it to her, it all made perfect sense and everything worked. And so, yes, that's something where if you approach the author, they would say, yes, I never wrote that. I never thought it before, but that is exactly it. Mm. Right. And 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 if you if, and if you approach if you approach an author and they would say that's not what I meant by that at all and I don't know where you got that then okay. then so, I uh, then I then I would say no not really like take take in the context of 
of what of what is in of what is inside the story before you're making the analogies with the story. Okay. Okay. And so and I, anywhere I, I, you find that doesn't align, that's an opportunity to do shadow work. To go, wait, yeah. why did I see that if it wasn't in there? So that's a way you can and, use fiction to your benefit. And I wanted to ask, because it's actually really interesting to me. Like if somebody so you know, uh so are you familiar with William James at all? Um, I've heard the name before. He, he basically said uh, he was a pragmatist. And so he thought, I don't know, like a bunch about it. Oh, or, yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Like if you have a religious, like he made a distinction between um, religious experiences that were uh, healthy and unhealthy or ones that were like the, the legitimacy of, of a religious experience is, is in the effects it has on the person's life. And I would kind of frame it as whether they're clear or distorted. It's, mm. There's certain connections to the other world that you distort so badly, the connection, that your experience is of no use to anyone but you. That's all your shadow work. But right. yeah. if you're a properly cleansed and prepared lens, you can experience it more clearly or well, it's a pure experience i guess what i'm going to ask is like if so what do you think if somebody is like an idiosyncratic person right and they find a meaning in a story and somehow it motivates them to it it, it makes them feel like they found something um and it motivates them like you obviously don't want somebody to be delusional but mm -hmm. if if they seem like they found a kernel or maybe they just need to uh they just need to talk about it more or talk it through or they need to like explain it more even if like their original this might mean this seems ridiculous there could be more underneath it that might i mean like their preconceptions were off right okay right okay yeah yeah, yeah. so if Are somebody you? approached me about something that's in my book and and it changed their life and and I said and I said something like, well, that that wasn't in there, or that's not what I meant. Like, would it kind of disillusion them or something like that? Like, it's the it, that's the don't meet your heroes problem, of like I had this entire thing built up from this thing that I experienced that was not reality, and it's like, well, on on one hand, you don't want to burst bubbles right too quickly. On the other hand, um, you don't want to not burst bubbles, and so there's there's a there's a balance to something like that. Like I've I've been watching a whole bunch of these uh, uh, Christian apologists uh, that go that that speak to the Muslim world, and um, this this one guy is saying, "Listen, I understand that the that these resources that we're doing and these arguments that we're having." are being used by atheists. To those atheists, I'm, I would say, please stop. And here's why. Because the, what, you're, what you're doing is that you're knocking out all of this foundation from people and not giving them anything to help them out with that. What we're trying to do is we're, we're, trying, we're trying to give people a, 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 another, another, a, another aspect, trying to tell them uh, tell them what we what we think is actually going on here, and then give them the resources to deal with that and not fall apart. If somebody just falls out of their religion, they and their bottom can fall out from underneath them, and they might become nihilistic and depressive and might maybe suicidal. And we don't want that. And and so it, in in terms of if somebody approached me about about something in my story that 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 motivated them or or inspired them and changed their life and like these things hap would happen to them like i would ask them to tell me their story right. and then i would i would probably figure out a different aspect of my story that actually did say that and point them to that instead mm. because it, it 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 wouldn't fully rip the rug out from underneath them still it's right. still in, it's still there it's just not in the spot you were talking about 
it's here, it's over there. So that, that kind of thing is, is, is don't disillusion people. Don't, don't rip people's uh, rugs out from underneath them if you know that there's a pit under that rug. <laughs> And my honest reaction that to that would be like, whether it was that I'd written something or someone was interpreting what I'd said in the stream, oh, it meant this to me, I made this change, is I would tune into whether or not the change was good or not. So mm -hmm. for instance, I write something and someone says, this affected me and because of it, I decided to start murdering and eating children. That's obviously <laughs> a bad effect. Or someone oh, says, I read this, it affected me and it made me give up you know, heroin and decide to live clean. It's, yeah. I would feel whether it was good. We've lost you. Hold on. One sec, Mark. You'll be back. <laughs> Come on, brother. You can do it. <laughs> One more me. megabyte per second. <laughs> Climbing through the, the at the reel. Mm -hmm. uh, he was he was on a good roll too. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think he was going into if the consequences are good, then there probably was something good in there. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's also something I would I would address. Like if I if 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 I didn't like agree with the with the with the avenue that the person that approached me had gone with, I would have been like, well, well, no, we're right. and and like and here's here's what I would say to that, and here's a different here's a different aspect that you might actually benefit from because I don't think that's actually beneficial. Mm. You know, and, and that might, that might, you know, hurt their feelings or something like that. But it's just like, you get hurt feelings when you're dealing with axioms. Like, people don't like it when you poke them in the axioms. I love that yes. line. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like we lost him. Uh, might have to re-invite him or something. Mm. But yeah, the, the, the axiom poking is something that we have to kind of get comfortable with. You know, talking philosophy. Un momento. I don't know if she was going. We'll be right back. Oh, yeah. Hey, buddy. Hey. Are you there? Yeah, my internet just cut out for a minute. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know where I cut out. And I said that, like, from my perspective of reality, I can accidentally pass something on to someone. And I can, like, I might choose to use a raven as an example, instead of a crow, where to me it's random, but to them that really matters. To me, the angels can work through. And if it's the opposite, where they come to me and they're like, hey, you know, I'm doing this horrible thing now because I heard that from you, then I would gauge that as there's no way the angels passed that on through me. Like, no, I wasn't being ironic about honesty. Yeah. And then it's yeah. where I would say, no, I don't see you as hearing. So to the person where it was a good change, I would... I imagine, like usually when this happens, I also get the feeling, yes, they've hurt us. Mm -hmm. And then if it's a person, if it's, it's something obviously bad, that's where I'm like, okay, dude, no, that shadow projection and you're fucked up and you shouldn't be doing that. Let's get to why you're doing that and why you think you hurt it. And then it becomes a therapy session of mm -hmm. like, why the fuck do you feel a need to hurt other people? And why yeah. did you hear that from me? On the other hand, if they heard something that made them of more service to others and find inner peace than like, sure, absolutely. That's probably why I mentioned a white rabbit in a green hat was because that would mean something to you. And I didn't need to know that to pass it on. And even if right now, if that meant something to someone, I also don't need even the letter. I'm fine with that. That confirmed to someone that yes, God's talking to you. And yes, listen to that voice at the back of your head right now saying, see, make that fucking change. That I allow the universe to work that way. Yeah, yeah, and and what what a lot of people, um, what, what a lot of people mess with with like the voices in their head is like, like man, this voice got really loud, and I was just like, man, I I gotta pay attention to this. It's like if a voice is getting loud, there's usually a problem because it's you know. It, that's not how it's described. I it's yeah. described as a still small voice. <laughs> I, I do I do deal with it. It's almost like, a, and I guess I I either 
misunderstand it as I just hear sometimes things can get loud and that can be like keep me awake almost or, mm-hmm. or it's it's hard exactly to describe but I don't I don't take that out of consideration like I consider that chatter but there definitely is a difference between that and like um Ryan uh Holzapple the uh he talks about like this cave inside this uh source of like uh I guess like not impulse but like in uh something that comes from deeper or or something more Deep, uh, deeper good or deeper bad deeper good okay like like a uh, 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 cave in a in a like mystical sense I guess okay um, and and there's uh, there's different so it's like different voices I guess mm-hmm. um, so not not the cave the dragon is in the cave exactly. that the old man is living in yes the the yes the cave the mystic goes in right yeah. and you can search God both ways as above so below as within so without you find God either way whether you're focusing on reaching out and up to God or going into yourself to the core of your being. Those two paths go around and loop together. They both lead you to source when you travel through them properly. And they both have like tangents that are traps, inward and outward. They're traps or things you can connect to, like your own projections, your own nonsense to fall in love with your own idea to be tempted by Satan and drawn down the wrong path, whether you're looking outward or inward, there are those traps. And when you encounter something, whether outward or inward, whether it's claiming to be an angel or a subpersonality, you judge them by their works, like observe them. Don't take their word for what they are. Yeah. The same way that, like, imagine you picked up a tool that you didn't know what it was. Like, yes, look at the label, but if it's like a handmade label, you know, you wouldn't just, just because a hammer was labeled a screwdriver in interacting with it, you'll notice it's a hammer. A good thing should lead to good things. Um, So if it's claiming to be a good thing, and you're becoming a worse person, Mm. And I would really question that. And so like, I love Manly yeah. P. Halls because he looked into all kinds of shit. And for him, it was like, when someone's claiming to have truth, look at when they learned that truth themselves. From that point, have they become more admirable or less? Mm-hmm. So if since they started preaching whatever, they become a more dishonest person, more self-serving, more don't bother listening to what they're talking about. Or a worm but, tongue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But if you look at them and you're like, oh, fuck, I want to be like that. Like, oh, the way he loves his wife, the way he does that, or just the way he sits and drinks his coffee. I love that. It's then that's some sign that if he gives you some life advice and he says that's what made him that admirable way, that mm. that's good advice to listen to. So the person who's just obviously miserable and constantly screaming at everyone that they know what everyone should be doing. It's, I have no inclination to listen to that person. Yeah. Yeah. I was watching a, a, a video today that by Disrupt. I posted it on the Discord of this programmer that got a messianic complex uh, because from his schizophrenia. And he programmed an operating system that was like supposed to be the next Jewish temple. It's just like, okay. And he, and he, he heard things and he did things and like, it didn't make him a better person at and all. Like the messianic, it worse. <laughs> that messianic experience, which yes, is damaging. It's not because that's not worth having and it doesn't serve you. It's that's a side quest. It's a riddle you need to learn to solve. It's not the full game. So Mm -hmm. it's when you treat the messianic experience like it's the game you're playing that you're and you're caught up in it. You're not learning the lesson yet. 
once you've realized, you realize, okay, that's a side quest. This is something I have to experience. It's a riddle to solve. And then back to center, back to the path, keep learning deeper wisdoms. Yeah. And it's when you think, no, no, this is the end of the game. I've got everything figured out. It's that you have to learn to have that experience of yeah. feeling like you've figured everything out and learn how to become mindful in that and go, wait, no, I fucking don't. It's like the equivalent of taking a drug. Mm. And all of a sudden being like, no, no, I'm on this drug. It's not that the world's turned purple. It's that I, you know, took this shot. So no, no, it's not that I know everything. It's that I'm plugged into these energy that makes you feel this way. Then you yeah. learn how to navigate while in that state. So I can get flooded with the messianic energy and it's invigorating and whatnot, but I know to check myself. That's not a place to speak commands from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did, did you have any other questions, Shane? Like any, um, anything that popped up that you, well, like, you're like, oh man, I gotta. Um, from what you guys were saying? Uh, no, from, from the talk earlier with Andrea. Um, I mean, just, or, or anything, yeah, really. Well, okay, so one thing, at some point, I mean, talking about video games is cool, but, um, <laughs> but I was uh, thinking about, oh, like, uh, also, besides things that you think, things that uh, maybe pronounce that like hammers that pronounce themselves as uh, as uh, screwdrivers, screwdrivers. Like, okay. I think the same thing goes for like negative parts of you. Like people would say are negative that are actually positive. Like there's parts of me like when I'm like like when you're pushing yourself or when you're lifting weights, like sometimes there's, you have feelings that you might think somebody might be uncomfortable with. But they serve a purpose. Right, right. It's just like right. a chainsaw. You don't pet your dog with a chainsaw. It's disastrous. <laughs> but it has a purpose. But you don't throw it away because it destroys right. dogs. You keep it for when you want to cut wood. Right. And or it's like the way Roger says when his warrior arises, it's got a place, but it doesn't have a place certain right. places. So your most vile thoughts and your darkest parts, those have a place. Even look in alchemy, it's, it's solve and coagulate. We need acids to dissolve things. Some of your dark emotions are yes, to destroy all your illusions and attachments. And sometimes it's solve, sometimes it's coagulate. Like it's, and so it's to know what you use each thing for. Right. But then you're safe. But right. a lot of people are out there trying to pet dogs with chainsaws. They're taking their inner warriors or demons and trying to have those do therapy on other people or teach other people. Like right. that's not what those are there for. So those I've are an, there for you I've, to test yourself. I've got an example of this. Uh, my first book, um, I wrote it in 11 hours because I was angry and that was motivating. Like I, I was, I was fed up and I wanted to do this kind of analogy, uh, analogy piece. It was basically like, a, uh, an institutional version of, uh, the Christmas story, like with Scrooge and all that. But, going through it uh you know i i needed help i needed help turning it from from an angry rant into a narrative and that's where Voth came in and he was a he was a guiding hand on that but if i hadn't have been angry i never would have written it in the first place and so i'm a lot i'm and i could have done other things with that anger i could have gone straight to the person i was angry at and punched him in the face, which is what I wanted to do. I wanted to do that. And many people would have seen me in my situation and, and why, and they would have said, yeah, that was the right thing to do. People would have said that, mm. but punching somebody in the face. And it's just like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be that person. Um, and so, you know, the, the, the other side of it was I could have picked up the phone and had an angry rant directly at the person and that wouldn't have solved anything because they wouldn't have accepted that and 
you know, because they have their own sides of, of the story and that, that kind of thing. And so I, I, so I, so I put it, I put it out creatively. If you can channel whatever happens to you in, into something that could potentially be a good, that's a lot better than just going straight at it. And, and, and like, I think, I think the verse is be angry, but sin not like, don't, don't let it, don't let it take you over, channel it to the good. And, and that, that's, that's also another verse is that what, what I think it was, I think it was, uh, Daniel, Dan, Daniel, um, Anyway, the the one who dreamed the the uh, uh, and got thrown into th thrown into a pit Joseph. and sold sold as a slave. Was Joseph, it jo Joseph, yeah, and he he said, you know, what you meant for evil, God has turned to good. It's like, yeah, use that, use that, use 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 what is meant for evil towards towards good. Don't 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 sin in your anger. That kind of thing, like. Uh, what, what's 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 an example of something that that you can share that that come comes up that's not very good? Shane, uh, an example of something that comes up that's not very good. Yeah, like a like a feeling. Yeah, some something like 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 what you're what you've experienced that you don't want to get out of hand. Um, okay, so the desire for destruction, mm -hmm. that's, that's something I try and channel. Um, and then the being trickstery, like, like liking to um, get, liking to, I guess the way I channel it is trying to wake people up with something, some absurd gesture or some, uh, I guess, so, so the, the trickster part of me trying to uh, put that in service by saying something or doing something that wakes people up, I guess. Okay. Um, so like, kind of like, uh, kind of like shock, shock jockeying, where you're like, like you're, you're, you're being pro provocative to turn people's attention to something, something else that you're saying. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And that can turn, that can turn bad. Like you can, you yes, can, very fast. You can, you can end up as Howard Stern and right. to, to the degree where people don't listen to him anymore because yeah. he's gotten so shocking. It's not shocking anymore. Right. And, and you know, he's not really going towards anything. He's just making people angry. It's like, yeah, it's not helping. So yeah, that can get bad. Yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> the the other side of that with with the the desire for destruction, that kind of thing. Have you ever looked into sculpting? No, I've not. Like with a chisel, like that's no. destruction there. <laughs> right. Or right. carving with a chainsaw to make or, yeah, yeah. and stuff. Um, mm -hmm or mining or working on a demolition crew. Like there's times where shit needs to be smashed yeah. right? because you're going to yeah. build something or even breaking something to make art out of it. Mm -hmm. Like breaking a window for the sake of using the shards of glass, yeah. you know, again, in sculptures. Col yeah. Collages and stained glass windows and that kind of thing is also good. Uh, pave pavement masonry. Uh, you can break up, tiles and stuff like that and make beautiful collages on the floor mm -hmm. uh, and then yeah. metaphorically you can break chains for people as well also with the trickster aspect where like the way the trickster somersaults instead of using it as just a gag you can start at it you only do those when others ask you so if someone comes to you and says i'm seeing it this way i want to see it this way Help them mm -hmm. flip it upside down. Or if someone's got some sort of bondage, or even if it's literal, you know, if you find an animal trapped 
by a barrier, destroying a barrier, or destroying a chain is right. destructive. But sometimes someone has something they can't get rid of. Or right. they're slaying a dragon, for instance. Like that's mm -hmm. destructive, but turn to right. service. Right. People will sometimes bring you dragons if you're a dragon slayer, and that's somewhere you can vent the destructive part of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and the thing is, you don't even have to slay the dragon yourself, but you could point out the chink in its armor. Mm. Like, you know, like if if somebody comes to you and is saying, like, I'm, you know, I'm I'm trying to, I'm trying to stop eating so much chocolate. It's like, okay, well, what's your routine? Like, every time you eat chocolate, what do you do? Well, and then they they kind of go through their routine, and it's just like, okay, well, that thing that you do right before you want chocolate, stop doing that. It's like, why? Because it's attached. It, it you have an order of things. Like I noticed the other day. Um, that I hadn't done any work and dad had brought it up and I said, no, I haven't done any work, you know, but I did a lot of thinking about it. And I'm like, well, that's a lame excuse. And I'm sitting there in front of my own father giving a lame excuse and knowing it's a lame excuse and telling myself it's a lame excuse while I'm saying it. It's like, this is stupid. It's like, I just need to work. Well, you know, it was, it was really late and I'm thinking, oh man, I got to go to bed. But then I'm like, yeah, but I haven't gotten any work done. So I turned on some music and then I realized I could get some work done. And then I remembered, oh yeah, every time I get some work done, I put on some music. And so as soon as I put on that music, I, I, I felt like, hey, I can get something done today. So maybe every time I feel like I can't get anything done, I'll just turn on some music. That'll mm. help out. And so- It'll help. If, so if you, this is where, this is exactly a great example where the trickster comes in and asks a question. So I'm gonna yeah. ask, um, have you tried, what do you think about doing, have you tried doing work? Uh, would you like the trickster's uh, idea here? Okay. Uh, have you tried doing work without music? Like, yes. As, <laughs> like, yeah. And is that like a possibility? Like, is it, is it um, like something you, Take it's, a, How does that go? it's a possibility, but it's a lot harder. Mm. And I can tell you why. It's because when I turn on that music, I can get into more of a flow because I'm not thinking about, hey, I need to watch this video or change the channel or mm. do any of this other stuff. Because I'll have stuff running in the background. Right. But if I have one song on loop, right. and I don't have to go change to the next song or something like that, I've got one song going over and over and over again. And it's something I can listen to over and over and over again. Like there will be songs that I edit myself because there's a certain part of it that I would like to skip. That's so I'll get rid. I'll get rid of that that part. Funny. Or the intro is like this weird dia dialogue, and so I'll just get rid of that. I just did that last night. I got rid of that and just listened to the song, and I could actually get something done. That's 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 crazy because I actually I actually have a hard time. I. Uh... Every once in a while, I will succumb to, I mean, pro more often than I would like to admit, like succumb to th the thing, uh, oh, I'm going to go check this side of the internet. Like when, when I like, I know I'm, I decide I'm going to do this and then mm -hmm. I get sidetracked knowing, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do this though. Like it's, it's all going to get done is, is my world yeah. around. I, I've got an example of that. I will leave the document, like, because I've got a Google document. And mm -hmm. so I've got Google up. I've got the Google document open. It's called Dusty. That's the main character because it's like the title is nebulous, really. It's like, here's my book. It's sitting there. I will stare at it. I will see that name up, always reminding me to mm. write something today. Mm. And it will be open and I will do nothing. It, it's just staring me in the face and it, I'll do everything else. And it's just, in, it's, it's infuriating. <laughs> mm. Have you tried, like, do you know that rule? Like just write something like write something like. Yeah. Random even like, mm -hmm. does that, yeah. does that 
how, like that's that's probably like if I wanted to like when you said you wrote a book in eleven hours, I was like that's probably how I would start is just put down uh, a thought or like maybe like something random or something like an idea that stuck out to me. Um, one time, does that does that work with you? Like just like hands to the keyboard, right? It, it can, it, it can, but I have to have an end goal. Mm. So when, when I start something like that, it will end up kind of rambly and I'll go circular. Like it'll come back around on itself and I, I will go back and read it and there's not really anything there. And so, you know, like I've, I've done that experiment before and it, it got, it got stupid. Like, hilarious stupid like funny stupid but the yes. because because i started out with you have no idea what i'm going to write and i'm okay with that and and i had and so that all all came out like that but it it, it See, my it, my trickster it, loves when it goes stupid yeah, yeah oh my god the, this is the most hilarious when it, thing. Goes, when it goes stupid you can actually get some get some joy out of it but joy joy being the 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 goal of it doesn't give me meaning it's mm. just oh that was fun or that was silly but when when i sit down and try to do that kind of thing if i have a goal or not a goal a parameter it's a lot easier like mm. like uh not okay write a poem it's like okay write a poem doesn't work all right, so write a poem about uh, somebody dying. It's like, okay, that, that's a little easier, but it's like, okay, it's like, okay, write a poem about this character who lost their mother. That I can do because I, I have a structure. Now I have a frame I can build within. And you need, it's, it's almost like you need four details like that so you can actually get a box or frame or something like that to build within because outside of that there's no bottom there's no sides there's no top you can't do anything with that outside of just shotgunning something at a wall and so if if you're really good at shotgunning you can get something out of that i'm not good at shotgunning <laughs> i need some kind of structure so if i can give myself or if somebody can give me something other than like that's why I didn't do any of the writing prompts in, in there's a writer's corner and they have a writing prompt and it's like, write, write about traveling. And I'm like, I got nothing for that. <laughs> like, give, give me something else, you know, like give, give me, give me like who's traveling. Why are they traveling? What's going on? Give me a name, you know, something like traveling to Greece to visit your grandmother, you know, in the winter. I can do that. <laughs> uh oh, we lost you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. For a split second, when you were like uh, traveling, I was thinking about how I would specify that for you, and like, I almost had a flash of a girl meeting, like going to see someone, or like grandfather. I think grandmother or something popped through my head, like for a split second, and then uh, you mentioned it. But that's that's cool. So you like, you sort of like. Uh, you need a space where you can like etch out details or like give a backstory or like, is it more like etching out details or what's it? It, I, I, I need, I need a, an area. I need that feminine space mm -hmm. where creation can happen. Mm -hmm. That, that I need, I need the space. You if I have no, if I have no space, nothing can happen. What I'm hearing is you need some limiting factors, some yes. parameters, right. yeah. so that then, okay, I've got enough parameters, I understand the space, I'll be able to operate. But so for instance, like write a poem is too open. There's no anchor, there's no, write a poem about death is only one, but write a poem yeah. about heroic death, you know, in the middle ages, you know, maybe that's enough. It's like, yeah. he just needs enough restrictions. Parameters, and yeah. Like yeah. It, that's what defines something. Makes am I doing a haiku or am I writing Shakespeare? It's like Shakespeare's a novel, a haiku is this big. So it's like, 
poem is too too expansive. So yeah, you're right. You're right. And reality is restrictive. Something's more real. The way you increase the definition on something is to mm -hmm. remove the ambiguity. Mm -hmm. If something's blurry and it could be this or this, like there's more freedom there. The more you restrict the image to note it's just this down to the finest detail, that's the more there is. But also, it's like it's the same thing with you. You need the restrictions of like the your male not female that's a restriction you're physical you're even that you interpret the world through sight sound those five senses as opposed to every other is a restriction that defines you the more we define you you're a son you're a student you're those are all definitions it's cutting off every other possibility the more i learn about you the more restricted shane is so he needs enough restriction to make it real enough and then the act of writing is to restrict it further mm -hmm. okay the she in this poem isn't just anyone now it's Anne. you know and as soon as he gives her blonde hair that's another restriction yeah. it's not anything but blonde hair but before he wrote that it could have been anything the story needs a book to live in the characters need a world to live in the mm -hmm. the yeah, i need a house to live in if I, if I don't have a house, I'm wandering aimlessly and I've got no, I've got like, what do I do next? That kind of thing. Like, you know, where do I eat? It's like, it's, it's an expanse explosion of questions. And if you don't have at least two or three answers, I don't know what I'm doing next. <laughs> mm. Mm. Where are you, Shane, by the way? I'm in, uh, it's near Monterey. It's, uh, over like between Monterey and San Jose, California. Oh, yeah, it's it's friggin' it's it's pretty. pretty How is it still out. bright? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where are oh you at? Uh, I'm in Arizona. It's dark oh. here. Okay. It's it's black. Like, I I guess I guess the sun. Hmm. Yeah, it's so it's seven twenty four. Yeah, wow, you still have sun at seven twenty four. Yes, oh yes, I've got eight twenty four. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. We we've got uh, the time zone thing. Arizona doesn't change, and so people change around us. So we have mountain time one half of the year, and uh, wow. California time the other half of the year. It's weird. I didn't know that. Yeah, or central and central and California. Anyway. Yeah, and speaking of time, have we been going almost four hours now? Just about. Yeah. Is that like every time you and I talk, Mercury? <laughs> we just keep going and going. I yeah. have that with a lot of private sessions that I have as well, go three or four hours, or the parties, there's nights even where I think, tonight I'm just going to make it three hours, and yeah. then it's five or six. Uh, yeah, that happens to me a lot. So, Shane, are you, you going to be editing this? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. You might want to cut this into like a two-parter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. And, or uh, even three. Cause or three, like, yeah, you know, three. Well, depending three. on if there's, there might be natural breaking points. Yeah. yeah. So you might yeah. kind of see that it's two or three. Right, mm -hmm. right. Anyway, dude, it was really great talking to uh, you guys. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and thanks for being our, our Jamie. <laughs> yeah. Yes, dude, I'd, lo I'd love to talk more about story at some point. Like that's, that for some reason that's, that's, yeah, it's just a really interesting, like great topic. Yeah. Also, yeah. that would be fun if one night both of you show up to a party at the same time. And you know, there's those dead spots where subjects change. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be great to do the conversation with a bigger group as well. Mm. Yeah, for sure. All right, cool. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to tap out. You guys can keep talking if you want and <laughs> work on a little bonus feature together. But <laughs> I mean, just in whoa, case this whoa, is whoa, the whoa, end whoa, of a whoa, video, whoa, uh, whoa. good night, audience. Right. <laughs> Sorry, what'd you say, Jay? Good night. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll just tap out. We'll talk probably tomorrow. Okay. And Kevin, I don't know, we'll talk sometime, I'm sure. Reach out anytime. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll I'll just be around the Discord. We can we can think of anything else later. <laughs> okay, right. cool. Great talking to you guys. Love you both. See you, buddy. Bye. Then Mr. Merck.
Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I'd love to talk about story uh, anytime. Uh, unfortunately, I don't. I don't think I'm going to be around for uh, this weekend. Okay. Um, as far as that goes, like I'm. I might be talking to Charlie this weekend, mm. but I don't know if that'll work either because cool. we're going to be out of town. I think and. Uh, I, I might have a laptop with me and I don't know if that's going to work. So it's, it's all up in the air. It's all nebulous, unfortunately, gotcha. but I would, I would love to talk anytime. Yeah. Like I, I don't, it was only until recently that I was actually to, able to openly talk about my book because somebody had mm. read it mm. and like actually had some, something to say about it. Cause I'd, I'd, given my book to a few people to read or at least aspects of it and they hadn't done anything with it. And so I was just like, okay, well maybe it's not that good. But then Charlie read the whole thing in a couple of days and I was like wow. shocked. <laughs> wow. How long did it take you to do that one? This one? I've been writing yeah. it since 2011. Wow. Man. Yeah. Yeah. It's Man. my, it's, it's my big novel. It's, it's like, a, it's over a hundred thousand words now. Mm. So, which is which is getting into the uh science fiction uh caps you know like because like i think the minimum for science fiction is 80 80 thousand mm. um yes and a, a novella is like forty thousand. so like i could chop it up into a couple of novellas and try to sell it piece by piece but honestly it, it just seems like it wouldn't work like that yeah. from from where it is right now but later on i don't know okay yeah okay because the 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 stuff the stuff going on through that story is so attached to each other that i kind of don't want to break it up mm. yeah you know, it, so it, is it, it like the uh is it like the magnum opus the uh i don't want to say that but yes <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah, it's like I would I would consider it my life's work if 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 I can be that mm. grandiose with it, but because it's the it's the thing I've worked the most on. Yeah, like out, outside of anything like working out or diet or anything like that, it's like this is what mm. I pour the most time into as far as a creative endeavor. It's like mm. it. it I look at that number of, of being over a hundred thousand words and I am shocked every time I looked at that. Cause like, I remember when it was 20 and 30 and like when I got to 80, I thought that was a grand achievement. And that was a couple of years ago. And I was just like, my gosh, like how long is this going to go on for? And it, it's, it gets to that point where I'm just like, I kind of want to be done with it. Like I want to finish it. I, w I just want to get this, get this over with. But at the same right. time, like I don't want to rush that, right? Because there's been, there's been serious points in my life that have changed the book. That if I had, mm. if I had rushed through it and written it and within like the first two or three years that I had been trying to write it, it would be a completely different book and it wouldn't have as much heart as it does. And there would be a war in the middle of it somewhere. <laughs> it's like it, an entire war that I, I, I cut out a war. And that was like half the book. So there's even more of the book that I've written. So it's even bigger than what's there. It's like, that's, that's insane to me right now. It's, it's hard to think about. Because it's also kind of that somebody, somebody said about writing, like it's, you have to learn how to, how to kill your darlings it's just like that's a terrible way to analogize it but it's also true <laughs> it's like you're cutting out parts that you've agonized over it's like yeah 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 yeah, so, yeah. and and with charlie helping me out with that like i'm i'm trying to figure out like what's what's helping what's not helping what's what's attributing to the story what's not attributing to the story and there's parts of it where he said, like, I don't, I don't know what's going on here, but it seems like this is happening. And I'll look into that situation and say, I never planned on writing that, but now I have to write that because that makes too much sense. Mm. It, 
it it has to be incorporated in some way he he helped me bring back something that i didn't realize i needed to do somebody somebody gets shot like quarter away through the book and i and it, and he said make it make it the character that you used to have it's like what but yeah yeah bring back that old character alive and, and put them in that book and put them in that part of the book then have that person be shot instead of the other person like oh okay so a character that you would have you you would have wow. met him wow when he was dead instead you'll meet him when he's alive and he would have actually been killed by the person instead of not being killed by the person and being killed by someone else it's just like all of this other stuff is flying in and that made me made me think of uh when freaking Merck mentioned that people are watching, people have watched this already that we don't know. Yeah. I've watched it. It's like, first, the question I wanted to ask him was, well, have they, have they watched it already? Like that's, I think that's a legitimate question. And, and it, like I good, I mean, I would encourage people to debate that. Yeah. Yes. Well, yes. It, they, they have watched it already. A lot of, you can, you can read my book and say, this is from, this is from this series. This is from that show. This is from this movie. It's like, it's like yeah, you can, you can pull in all of these stories that you've heard throughout your whole life and read them through a whole bunch of other stories mm. and not realize that you're doing it. Mm. And, and I think that's why, that's why Charlie okay. was able to read into the backgrounds of all of these characters that, that backgrounds I hadn't written because he'd seen that story before mm -hmm. and he understood why like he had he had that depth of knowledge of story okay so he was almost he was almost uh like taking the stories that the common stories between yours and other like stories and s seeing avenues that he had found that he had like discovered from other offers authors and offered that to you basically something like that mm -hmm. because they made more sense right and 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 not 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 in the fashion of all of these stories have to be the same like because i don't agree with that like that the right. the, the hero's journey thing that was, that was written, the hero with a thousand faces i don't agree with that that mm -hmm. story like i understand there's similarities but it's not all the same story because that that's the that circle that you get in that book, like that's not in, that's not in Hamlet. <laughs> it's like that's that's not that that's not in. Uh, there's there's so many there's there's so many stories in which don't fit into it, that I feel like it breaks that, it breaks it breaks up what he was trying to do with that, and, and even the folks that try to use that just make a generic story, mm. and it doesn't it doesn't have the same heart if you're just using it i i talked with both about this um if you if you don't allow for any spontaneity then you are do you're writing formulaic then you're constructing the whole thing nobody's going to want to read it after you've written that same story the fifth or 18th time because right. like there's entire sections of goodwill shelves stuffed with romance novels by the same woman and it's like the same story over and over and over again with different characters mm. in different circumstances but it's the same story right it's just like change it up like write right. write science fiction for a year try to try to do something else right right or add like do it the same, but add one or two scenes that that kind of uh, give it some novelty or something. Yeah, like try to try to figure out like what if, like ask yourself ask yourself a stupid question. Like that's what that's how I built my book. Is I ask myself a stupid question. What if the what if the Joker was a good guy? That's where I started. Hmm. Of how do I how do I how do I like make my main character a joker that is a good guy right how does that make any sense and the what has built out of that is a whole bunch of stuff i never planned that 
culminated in this character that became a a guy that mentors people and pushes them in the right direction and the whole time it makes it look like he's trying to get ahead himself or do it selfishly or 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 it looks like he's like he's like he's not trying to do it and and through through the whole thing you're just seeing him push people towards their better selves and he's just being silly <laughs> like and, or annoying them it's just like what what mm. is going on here like he's the dude's three characters he's the hero he's the sage and he's the fool and he right. doesn't make right sense but if you took him and tried to make him just the hero he wouldn't he wouldn't be any fun anymore if you if you just tried to make him the fool he'd be too ridiculous if you just tried to make him the sage he'd get boring so like, he is he's basically using yeah uh, so sounds like he's basically joking people into becoming their higher selves or 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 yeah. or, yeah. or trying to bring some light like i guess uh I don't know. That's that's what image came to to me is like pushing somebody towards the light by being foolish yourself almost. It's it's called it's uh it's the opposite of what the Joker calls the one bait one bad day. Mm. So it's the, it's the one good day. Like I'm gonna give you a really good day and it's gonna change the rest of your life, but you're oh. not gonna realize it. And the the that that's what that's what he does he but the the th the problem with the one bad day is that it's usually not a one bad day it's usually a one bad life <clears throat> so the the one bad day thing doesn't really work so the one good day probably isn't going to work either but you can still have a one good day and have it have it go towards a one good life right and so uh he 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 can push that forward in a one good, a one good month, and that's that's what he does for the character of Tom. Tom is just a kid who winds up on a ship, Shanghai into this into this smuggler's life that he's just like some street kid, and he's like, listen, I don't I, I don't know what I'm doing here, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not a criminal, I I just. I'm just getting by and they sounded like a fun adventure. Well, I got here. None of it's the way I wanted it to be. I'm just getting beat up left and right. You know, uh, he's, he's getting, you know, he's the, you know, the peon and the totem pole, but the, the thing, the thing that gets him by is this guy that everybody says, don't work with him. He'll get you killed showing up, looking at him, and 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 figuring out that I can change this kid's life and it can help me too. But all the all the readers focusing on is he's my ticket out of here. He's gonna replace me and I'm gonna get off the ship. No. Is that what he's gonna get out of it is I'm gonna help him, he's gonna help me. Me helping him is going to help the captain. He's helping everyone. Okay. And what's the name? Of, what's what's the name of it? Do you, of what? Uh, your book. Oh, right now. Uh, right now the 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 book is it's it's an obscure word called uh, pronounced Germanically. It's wunderlich or or wonderlich. It's it's a it's a term for somebody who's 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 Ridic ridiculous and fantastic mm. <laughs> mm. and that's kind of the way that dusty is he's a wunderlich he's it's like he's he's absolutely out of his mind but he's also so sane people don't get him right and and that's that's something that he had to come into going through his own pain and he's still growing through the whole thing he's the sage that is also the hero who has to grow in his own story He's not, he, you don't start out as Obi-Wan and, you know, but 
you know, you've got, that's, that's, I, that's why I was kind of thankful. Like Andrea was kind of bashing the prequels, but I was just like, yeah, but I'm also thankful for the prequels because that shows you this, the growth of Obi-Wan. Mm. It's like Obi-Wan went through a lot before he became the sage in the hut, you know, in the middle of the desert. It's like, no, there's, there's so much life in that guy and, and him dying in the first movie is almost a disservice to the rest of his story. It's just like, you got to hear the rest of it. You got to hear what happened to him. Like yeah. how he lost his master. It's just like, there's a lot to this. And that's why I was, I was thankful. I was thankful for the pre prequels. And when people started bashing the prequels, I'm just like, yeah, but you're not seeing the story. You're just mm. seeing the quality. The quality's not that great. You're right. The acting is terrible. You know, the lines are bad. What's the story though? The story's fantastic. You know, the the it's it's what I look for in a good video game. You know, that's why I could stop playing a lot of these a lot of these free to play stuff because it's just like it's a struggle. Yeah, but it's not a very good struggle. Mm. And I I I started playing a whole bunch of these games and because I didn't like playing the multiplayer stuff, I started looking into, can I find a good story? Does this have a good story? That's why I really dug into the Legend of Zelda stuff. Yeah. Legend of Zelda has a good story. It's, you know, it's a, it's a really an adventure. You're, you're actually striving for something and for the good of other people. And it's not just like, I'm just the hero. It's like, no, this guy doesn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> He, he, I think, yeah, that, that helps him. Man. I think. Have you heard that um, idea that the hero, I, I might have brought it up to either you or uh, um, Andrea that the hero, so he doesn't have parents, right? Link doesn't have any parents mm. because it allows him to be able to take his risks because there's nobody uh, counting on him. Yeah, the, the, the idea of Link is very Eastern, and, but it's in a Western setting because mm. it's like elves, elves, right. elves in a medieval time, that kind of thing. But the ideas right. behind him are very Eastern because it's a cyclical story because mm. you keep getting Link and Ganondorf and Zelda reborn. And so are all the other characters. You see the same characters in almost every game, which is, it, it's funny, but also kind of sad because it's just like, how does this grow forward? But anyway, Link as a character in some instances has, no, has nothing at all and he just starts out as him. In other instances, his, his uncle dies. In another instance, he, his, he, he doesn't have a father and his mother stole him away and gave him to the great Deku tree to raise. And so he, he grows up as a Peter Pan kind of kid in the forest with all the Kokiri who don't also grow up, but he's not a Kokiri. He grows up, but he's not a Kokiri. He's a, he's a Highland and he's not from here. And so he comes back seven years later and he's all, he's all grown up and everyone else is looking at him. All these kids are looking at him like, wow, you grew up. <laughs> and, and so he, he I, I think that's why the legend of, why the Ocarina of Time is the, probably the pinnacle of the legend of Zelda storytelling. Because was, was that what happened to him in that one? Was that's what parents? happened. Yeah, okay. his, his mother stole him away to save him because there was, they were in the middle of this war and she gave him to the great Deku tree in the forest who, who he was raised with the Kukiri. And the, the depth of that story, the aspects of that story that are, uh, that are shown through your adventure, you have an unrequited love in which you like you you run into this 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 rudo character she's she she's so bratty and ridiculous but she falls in love with you because you saved her and then you come back seven years later and save her again 
and she ends up being a sage and she was betrothed to, to you of which wow. you weren't part of that betrothal she just kind of said oh by the way we're engaged to now because i gave you this ring or, or the, wow. not this ring she gave you one of the one of the sacred sacred gems that you needed and she's like ma mother said if i give this to somebody that means that they have to be the man that i marry and so it's just like oh okay so well i had nothing to do with that but whatever and you end up not marrying her because she ends up as a sage but from her side of it that's this story of unrequited love and that's kind of heartbreaking from her side of it but at the same time she's now this oddly immortal thing right. and it's like where's the like all the different analogies that can go into that it's like okay wow but at the other end of that people always throw zelda and link together as this uh eternal couple or something but when you look into the story of it all yeah it's almost like they're almost not it, it, it there's only one i think it's the second one the second one they kiss behind a curtain and that's all you see about uh, of that and uh and i think in one of the 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 saturn cd games or whatever where they or they they do that but okay yeah the so ca canonically i don't think they're much of a couple he, canonically it seems like he always ends up with with the farm girl right and he's a he's he's that kind of a guy he's right he's he's right. not even a knight really even though they kind of forced it forced him into that role in the last couple of games where they made him a knight and he was like captain of the guard or whatever <laughs> in but, the back of his mind he really doesn't want to it's like no yeah it, it's <laughs> like all of this stuff they kind of force him into into these roles but he's just not any of that he is a country bumpkin with a yeah. sword that got into a big story line that he is unwittingly a part of and he just does what he can that's it that's link no matter what timeline or storyline or loop you're going through he's nobody that fights for everybody <laughs> right okay so when you said he uh so first before you mentioned the country girl i was like okay so he's destined to save zelda but not destined to necessarily be with her and then no. i was like and then i was like okay but he's with this farm girl at the end i guess those two things can exist in the same world but at the time when when you mentioned them like separately oh, they, they, seem they like all exist because they're in a loop together. unfortunately because mm. that's the way that that universe works i gotta go because i i gotta okay. eat but <laughs> yeah, the next time we talk about this, um, I, I, I do do some research on the Zelda timelines because they're ridiculous. Yeah. But I want to talk to you about this because I I figured out I figured out a timeline in which it all works. <laughs> okay. And and I've told yeah. somebody and they're not interested in the timeline stuff. They just want to write their own story. But I want to talk about this more because there's yeah. there's so much to these to these to many video games and many stories like this but i would love to talk to you to with you about storyline again someday yeah probably yeah. next week okay yeah. okay yeah, yeah for sure i will i will look into to zelda a little bit more yeah it's 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 an experience if it's you can't big. play Dude, if you link can't play it watch the watch somebody else play the game mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. link yeah. what Paul, he just interests me to no end. Yeah. 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 Silent protagonists are like that. They're supposed to be <laughs> they're supposed to be mysterious. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, Shane, it's it's great to talk to you. That was yeah. that was fantastic. I didn't think this was going on that long. Likewise, man. Yeah, you were a trooper. <laughs> All right, man. Yeah. Uh I, I will talk to you later. All right. All right. Bye.